welcome to the Seek First CEO podcast, a community for high achieving kingdom women committed to seeking God first and keeping God first in all we do. If you believe you're called to impact the world through your gifts, then you're in the right place. Hi friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned speaker and your host of the Seek First CEO podcast. I'm passionate about helping ambitious servant hearted women find their worth in whose they are, not what they do. As a certified master neuroscience life coach, I help you connect the dots between biblical principles and brain science so you can take your thoughts captive and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't do surface, so we go deep here and we talk about the stuff underneath the surface because I want to help you get to the source of your heart set and mindset roadblocks so you can have breakthrough by aligning your heart and mind with biblical truths. If your heart's desire is to grow in your relationship with Jesus while fearlessly fulfilling your purpose and calling, then let's open up the word together and see what the Holy Spirit has to say about living your life in flow with him. Are you ready? Then get excited for today's episode. Hello, friend. It is that time of year. Can you believe we are wrapping up 2022? I don't know about you, but where did the year go? I am so excited. Today is actually December 1st, and I had planned on having this podcast recorded prior to today, but here we are. I want to give it to you raw and real today. It's happening, my JOMO 2022 challenge, and I want to invite you to join me along. You might know about it. You might not. I've been doing this for the past few years, but I titled this episode, Five Signs You Are in Need of a Social Media Break, ASAP, because in the month of December, for the past few years, I have been taking the entire month off of social media. What does that look like? You're probably asking. How can you do that when you have a business online? And so I wanted to walk you through, first of all, five signs that maybe you also are in need of some sort of a break. Now, this can look different. Maybe God's calling you to a a week off, maybe two weeks, maybe like me, a month. I don't know. I have actually, uh, the first time that this happened was in 2019, and it was in the summer. I was on vacation, and I kept hearing the word rest. And I remember that a coach asked me one time, what if God asked you to get off of social media for the rest of the year? I was in a very deep healing season, and I laughed at her literally laughed out loud. And I was like, you don't understand. I, this is my lifeline, right? And this is the only way that I make an income. And she didn't push it or anything. And so I, you know, that was really a day that a seed was planted. Fast forward several months later after this conversation I had with her, I was on vacation and I was spending quiet time with the Lord before my kids got up on the balcony of the beach, the condo that we were in. And I kept hearing the word rest and it hit me. And God was saying, I want you to rest. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that look like? Obviously I'm on vacation. So I thought that was the rest that I was going to take. And he kept saying the word rest. It ended up being, I almost took two months off of social media. Now at the time, if you know my story, I had lost in 2018 uh, the big business that I had built and uh, was really recovering financially and emotionally from that uh, tragic loss. And so I didn't really, it didn't make sense. How could, how could I rest? How could I stop building? But God kept saying rest. And rest used to be a four-letter word to me, but I believe that rest is a gift from God. In fact, the Bible tells us it is because Sabbath is, it's a gift from the Lord. It was made for man, not man for Sabbath. And so really rest is an opportunity for us to be restored and renewed and refocused, all of the re words that you can think of, restoration. And so I wanna encourage you, if you have been feeling like, and I asked this question in my Facebook group about three or four weeks ago saying, who in here is feeling this really big draw, this really big desire to take a break off of social media? And overwhelmingly, everybody said yes. And then of course, there's a few people who are like, I just don't understand how you can do that when you have a business online. And then I'm receiving messages in my inbox. Can you tell me more? So first of all, let's just start out with this. What are some signs that you might be in need of a break? Number one is if you find yourself wasting time on social media and often refer to as the scroll hole where you fall into this deep, dark rabbit hole and you don't even know what you're doing, you don't know why, and you're like, my goodness, what am I doing? And hours go by and you realize you just wasted time. If that is you, then there's a really good chance that you are in need of a social media break or a social media fast. 
Number two, your cup is empty and you are struggling to come up with content. Listen, God did not call you to this business to stress you out. God called you to this business to serve. And I think so often in this entrepreneur space, we struggle with serving because we're constantly pouring out, pouring out. And we forget that we are not just called to pour out, we're called to overflow. And so that's the whole basis of made to flow, right? We have to learn to flow first and then we get to overflow. And so if you have been really struggling with coming up with content, it's like almost as if your creativity is is being it's being you know backed up it's stopped up it's not flowing then there's a good chance you God's saying hey come to me come to me so that we can disconnect just like a cell phone right they say that everything works better if it's unplugged and for you that might look like unplugging from social media now again some of you are still saying but how but how can I do it when this is my lifeline how can I do it when I didn't achieve my goals in 2022 yet and I have three weeks to four weeks to finish it out Keep listening, okay? So if your cup is empty and you are really struggling and you're finding yourself just consuming information, trying to, you know, whether it's just be entertained or you don't really have a plan, there's a really good chance you, God's calling you to disconnect for a minute. All right, because God doesn't just call you to flow. God wants you to overflow. Your cup should overflow with ideas. And I don't know about you. Personally, though, I find that when I spend more time with the Lord, I have a lot more content to share because he is giving me, he's feeding me. And in that, I get to share some of those things. I've also learned not all those things are for people and or not all those things are for it right now. But I just get to this place where I am, my cup is filled, right? And so when my cup is full and overflowing, Flowing. God is creative. He's a marketer. I mean, Jesus, hello, was the greatest marketer of all time. Talk about giving someone a message and then sharing. He was the biggest influencer. His message is still going out to the ends of the earth. And it's just wild to think about the fact that that one message, right, continued to go. But it's also because Jesus knew that he needed to retreat and go spend time with his father. Sometimes we think maybe saying no to people is selfish, but often I think it is really prioritizing. And so I want to encourage you with this. I have this written in my notes. It doesn't really go necessarily with the point that I'm making, but your yes to something is a no to something else. Every yes that you make to something is saying a no to something else. And so when you even open up your apps, your time saying yes to this is then saying no to whatever else it may be in your life or your family or your whether that's your health or your quiet time or whatever it is you're supposed to do. And I am so guilty of this. I have found myself wasting time before I know it, it's midnight. That's why I made a rule never to take my phone into bed. It never fails. If I do it, I am scrolling until a crazy time. And so my role is I put my phone away from my bed and I turn it on airplane mode. And so I don't get into bed and just leave it and scroll till you know the wee hours of the night. So all of that to say, if you are not in a, if you are not feeling like you're overflowing with content, then I would encourage you to carve out some of that time, whether that's again a week off, a month off, whatever, to spend time with the Lord so that your cup is getting filled, so that you overflow into the people you're called to serve. Another sign that you are in need of a break is you're getting stuck in comparison and you're really feeling worse every time you open your apps, right? You start to feel like, oh, whether it's my business isn't as successful or my house isn't as pretty. Man, I have been looking at some gorgeous Christmas trees and we just bought a white flocked tree this year. I really wanted one and we just got one and I was so excited to decorate it. But let me tell you, after I have seen in the last you know, 48 hours some amazing trees, I am feeling completely overwhelmed. These things look crazy awesome and I thought, wow, I do not even have the decorations to do that. But I'm going to do what I can with what I have and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that fine line. Obviously, you can use other people to inspire you or you can use other people to discourage you. And so I encourage you, if you are getting online and the majority of your time you are feeling discouraged, you are feeling like you are behind, that everybody else is ahead of you. This actually came up in one of our coaching calls the other day in our group coaching program. And one of the women said, you know, I feel like everybody else is business is thriving and mine isn't and I haven't signed a new client in a while and 
it looks like everybody else is succeeding and there's not enough clients to go around. I'm, I'm missing out. And so if that's the case, let me tell you, there are some things God is revealing to you that he wants to show you that you're believing some lie and that you're they're getting it's stuck in that comparison and where you are versus where they are is a dangerous place to be, especially with social media. Don't forget, social media is a highlight reel. I shared with my community the other day that I personally am walking through a season with the Lord and I know Jesus is healing things that have been deeply hidden for a very long time. And I'm not sharing all of those details publicly. Obviously I'm sharing this, the idea here, um, but I'm showing up and I'm serving in the capacity that I can while not sharing all the other things. And so really, again, social media is a highlight reel. It's it's to serve. And I think, yes, being authentic, but also knowing when to share what. So don't get sucked into other people's perfection and their highlight reels when, I know we've all heard it, but I think we still always need that reminder and that reality check. Am I believing that their life is that perfect? Because let me tell you, the same enemy that's after you know you and everybody else he he is trying to distort and deceive and divide and discourage every other person who's on on a mission for the lord and that's nothing to be afraid of and not to say oh we should all fear the enemy because we're a target no we if we have the armor of god on we have nothing to fear and if we are practicing our authority and our power we have absolutely nothing to fear but that doesn't mean that the stuff doesn't come the arrows don't come the fiery darts don't come they're coming we just have the shield of faith we have the helmet of salvation we have the breastplate of righteousness so we have all of these things on so that when they do come we are protected all right so if you're getting stuck into comparison and you're starting to feel worse every time you get online feeling like you are lacking and that you are behind and that everybody else's life is better than yours it is time for you to take a break all right the next one number four is you have no boundaries like you essentially what I really feel like this is is you realize maybe that you may have an addiction just I think you know in in the Christian space I think sometimes we don't talk about some of the very real addictions that we as people can have and essentially what do I mean by that these things have become idols these things have become so important to us and that we don't have self-control around them well if we have the Holy Spirit we have we should have self-control and if he is guiding us and we are being spirit-led then we should have self-control right we have power love and a sound mind which is is also self-control so if you're realizing that you really don't have control over the time just like me i have to set boundaries in place at night so that i don't scroll until 12 or 1 or 2 in the morning it's happened one too many times and then i can't get up in the morning and then i'm miserable you know i think this is something i teach in my coaching is that we talk a lot about the miracle morning we rarely talk about the miracle evening your evening routine matters and set you up for success or failure for your morning routine. So I wanna encourage you, if you're feeling like you don't have any boundaries, you really don't have control, you perhaps are realizing that maybe you have a little bit of an addiction here. Listen, there are other things that we can have as idols in it, like food, food addictions, caffeine, sugar. There are so many things that are, are, are not how God has created us to be and we have let these things into our life. And let me tell you, the social media, the tech companies, Apple, they all are very aware. The apps, you know, all those things, their goal is to keep you on their whatever, whether it's a game or a social media platform, their goal is to keep you on it as long as they can because there's all these other things tied to it. I've done some really crazy studies on the effects of social media and the dopamine that we get, the hit that we get every time we get a notification, whether it's an email or a a text message or um, an app telling us that you know we have a new comment or a new like or whatever it may be and so I want to encourage you if you, you don't have boundaries with this there is there it can get really dangerous and so for me a couple safeguards that I do I have a whole episode on this specifically is you know really how to set some healthy boundaries around your phone but one of those things is that I turn off all notifications so that I don't get notified. I, my phone doesn't control me, but I control 
my phone and what I want to look at when I want to look at it. So anytime an app says, can we send you alerts? Can we send you notifications? I'm like, absolutely not. No, you cannot. I will check you when I want to check you. So if you really have no boundaries, maybe this is a time where you can take a week and you can delete all your apps. You can change all your notifications. You can really pray about God, help me see where this is consuming my life and that I don't have boundaries with it. And I'm going to it instead of coming to you. And listen, I only say these things because I have been here. I am not like immune to all these things. I really have to catch myself in it. And once I notice patterns or I realize, man, I haven't been able to get up in the morning. I want to get up earlier so that I can get, you know, my alone time and my workout and my quiet time. And I'm just not able to. Well, often it's tied to what I did the night before. Staying up till 12, 1 in the morning, 11 o'clock even at night, trying to get up at 5 is, is really not realistic. So just some extra little tips for you. And then number five. This is a real simple one, okay? A sign that you might be ready for a break if you want to, if you want to, right? And so there's this this concept of I need to be present. I, I have to stay on. I have to post every day. I have to make sure people see my stuff. I need to, I should, I have to. All that language is pressure filled. If you in your spirit are really craving a break, and you think, man, I could go for to detach myself from this. Again, this can look different for you. For me, it's turned into a month and I have written this into my business plan that I take off the month of December on social media. And I am in full trust and confidence that God is going to provide. Now, I think there are some strategic ways, and we'll get into that here, is that the how. Like, okay, Heather, this is all great. I feel like I want to. Maybe I realize this might be a little bit of an addiction. I have I have definitely gotten to the comparison mode. My cup, I feel like I can't. I lost my creativity. I'm, I'm just not able to create content. It's frustrating more than it's fun. And I'm really wasting a ton of time on these platforms. Your phones will tell you, by the way what your screen time looks like. Now mine, if my kids use it, is a little bit distorted, but you can, you know, as a mom, we monitor our kids and how much time they have. Are we also monitoring ourselves? And so number five really is if you want to, if you want to take a break, then I would really say, okay, why do I want to take a break? What is this? Get curious around what does this mean for you? Why are you feeling like you want to take a break? And that whole language of you need to be present, you have to end the year strong, you should do this, you must do this, where is that voice coming from? I do not believe God pressures us into doing things. I believe he positions us and he prepares us and he prunes us. But when we feel that pressure to prove and pressure to show up and pressure to perform and pressure to produce all the time, which is often what social media does, This pressure to produce content 24-7 and be entertaining and be educating and all these things, it really can suck the life out of the joy of the, the very thing God's created you and I to do. So if you want to, get really curious and explore that with the Lord. Lord, I'm really wanting to take a break. Why is this? What 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 am I feeling that I need? And so these questions that I always get after I share, you know, that you can. You get to, if you choose to and you want to, you absolutely can. If you feel like you have got the green light from the Lord, that you can take some time away, then why wouldn't you? Okay, so I want to share this with you too. That, again, this is going to look different for everybody. And I know for me, the Lord has challenged me very much in my entrepreneurial career if I trust him. And so it's it's a lot of this comes down to trust. Do you really trust that God is going to provide for you? And my goodness, we think of Mary and Martha, right? Who was the the good portion? She chose the right thing to sit at the feet of Jesus while Martha's running around like crazy. Some of some of us run around like crazy on social trying to generate this revenue and these ideas and maybe going viral and all these things when God's like, I have the best thing for you. Come and sit with me. Come and sit at my feet. I can do more with your 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 rest than you can do with your hustle. And so, okay, the questions I get is, okay, practically, Heather, how can I actually do this? I have a business. It's all online. It's how I generate revenue. Can I just give you a testimony that in 2018, when I lost my eight-figure business and I literally overnight, you know, kind of went from everything to nothing, I really, I spent a good portion, I really pr- pretty much all of 2018 and a lot of 2019 in my office 
my work time would look like prayer, worship, listening to sermons, reading the Bible, doing devotions, studying scripture, and just pouring out my heart to the Lord, you know, journaling, crying, all these things. And the Lord provided. Now that's a very unusual strategy for either building or maintaining a business, but I share this testimony to tell you that I know that it's possible because God made a way for me. And I am so thankful for that season of my life that the Lord carved out that precious time in that office that I got to spend with him. And we never really on a bill, you know, did my business ever get back to eight figures? No, but God provided and he created space for me to be able to rest and to really learn and that I don't have to hustle all the time, that I can take a break. In fact, rest is a requirement. It's it's a gift for us. And if we don't rest, we are cheating God out of more than what he can do. And really probably believing that we can do more than God. And I've been there where I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me that I feel like I am my provider. We often say, you know, God, Jehovah Jireh, he is, he is my provider. But do we act like it? And so this isn't to say that you have to take a social media break. This is to say, listen, if you have these signs that I've shared with you and you really want to, then my question to you is why won't you, right? Some of the times we spend so much time on the, well, uh, you know, should I and all the things. But like my question to you is just flip the script. Why, why would you not? And those are the things that you get to take before the Lord and ask him, okay, so Heather, how do I do it? Do you make an announcement? I always get this question. And so do you make an announcement? I think that's going to look different for everybody, right? I mean, for those of you who have, so I have I have coaching programs and I have a community of thousands and thousands of people. So yeah, I do make an announcement. I do tell them, hey, see ya, Jomo Challenge 2022. I'll see you in 2023. And another thing that I like to do is uh, I'll schedule a couple posts throughout the month and just say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying my time off. Wanted to encourage you. It's just And depending on what your business looks like, you might have your VA running your group while you personally are offline. This can look very different. If you are a solopreneur and you don't have a team yet, maybe you will. You'll schedule a few posts and you will trust that God is going to not cheat you out of your blessings when you choose the good portion which is him at his feet then he's not going to cheat you out of anything that he has for you uh can you keep messenger that's something that other people ask me I'm like listen i'm not the boss of this thing uh, but i do get this question as well like should i delete everything do you keep messenger like do you communicate with anybody personally messenger i have ptsd for my years in the network marketing profession i used to spend hours in messenger talking to people and while that was it's beautiful at times and i love that i can voice message people on there i used to sit there and answer 100 plus messages every single day and i got a little bit of ptsd from messenger so for me that is the first thing that i want to go is messenger i don't want people to be able to communicate with me at their beck and call right and so obviously i have boundaries around that where i don't answer messages all day long like i used to i have specific times that i go in and i answer those messages but my encouragement to you is do you want to get rid of messenger is that a part of it that you feel is taking away your time, taking away your joy, taking away this idea of not being able to get fully restored. So I don't even know if I share this with you, but really this whole idea, a lot of this is we wrestle with taking a break because we have FOMO. And that's what the whole JOMO challenge is, is the joy of missing out. There is joy at the feet of Jesus. There is joy at drowning out the noise of the world and getting into the presence of the Lord and focusing on your family and really focusing on yourself. You know, one of my mentors one time said this, and I use this a lot in coaching calls because my woman typically is very busy. She has a lot on her plate. She is multitasking. She's juggling a lot of things. And she wears often busy as a badge of honor. I used to too. And the Lord really showed me through that why I was doing that. But a mentor of mine said, busyness is a sign of lack of intimacy. That rocked my world once I really sat with that and thought about that. So I'm going to share that with you today. I've said it before, but um, for those of you who haven't heard this, or that you need the reminder, busyness is a sign of lack of intimacy. And sometimes that's intimacy with yourself, so maybe your husband, your kids, God. 
you know, spending quiet time. We stay busy so that we don't have to have that intimacy sometimes. And I think social media can keep us really busy. You, see, If you ever gone to a restaurant and you see everybody's heads are down and they're all looking at their phones, even people on dates, you know, it's like, what are we doing? We have come become a society where our phones have seriously become like people to us. And there are many, many beautiful things about it because I've been able to connect with people all across the world and have built relationships and God is using technology and we have to choose to have boundaries with it. So keep messenger. I don't know. It's up to you. Pray about it. Ask the Lord for me. I'm totally getting rid of it. Do you delete the apps from your phone and do you get on online? That's a question I usually get. No, I do not get on online. So that takes self-discipline because I can very easily, whether it's on my phone through the Safari or on my computer, I can log in. But I have committed to myself and to the Lord that I owe myself this break and I want to take some time off. So another way that you can really still keep in touch with your clients is one, A, let them know that you're taking this time off. You can send them your email. I promise you, if people want to get a hold of you, they will figure out a way. Give them your email. And if you personally have an email list, you can continue to keep in touch with your clients throughout the month without ghosting them. Just because you're not on social doesn't mean that you're not alive, right? Just because you're not posting about every single thing in your life doesn't mean that your life is not continuing. And so an email list and communicating through that way is a great way. This is for those of you who don't have an email list. Can I encourage you? This is one of my biggest mistakes, I think, in business. And I heard it year after year after year after year, and I still didn't do it. And I wish I would have started an email list sooner. There is never, it's 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 never too late to start. So to start, if you don't have one, start. If social media were to go down or you were to lose your account, like a lot of these people are losing How can you communicate with your people, right? We can't just rely on our Facebook group or our Instagram account. We really want to own those emails so that we can communicate. And by all means, I am not the best emailer. If you're on my email list, you already know that. I'm not super, super consistent, but if I needed to get a hold of you or I needed to encourage you or wanted to send out some sort of communication, I absolutely could. All right, um, I already mentioned this, but it was you know to schedule post, right? So if you really want to stay in touch, the forefront of your your audience's mind, and maybe you have a promotion or something, you know, schedule some post out, and then link it to your sales page, or link it to your email, or link it to your phone number if you really want people to be able to connect with you. I know for me, usually. I give a few people my cell phone and say, "Hey, you know, here's my number. If you if you want to connect or need me, here I am." And then really replacing your time on social, like you could absolutely use this as a strategic way of, a a way to fast, right? You're fasting from social media and there's so much power in fasting from food, from technology, from, from different things, right? Taking away this one thing, denying yourself from one thing and replacing that with time with the Lord. And so you can really look at this as an opportunity to, um, to fast. And I always say like, you know, really replace, replace that time with something that's good, with something that's holy, with something that's of the Lord. We talk so much about planning for 2020, you know, the next year and planning out Q1 and Q2. And I, there is nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to give you a question the Lord gave me um, a few weeks ago. And he's just asked me, Holy Spirit asked me, what if you don't have a strategy going into 2023? I thought about that. And right, it goes against the grain. It goes against everything everybody says. And for some of you, that's not going to make sense. And God's not asking you to do that. But for some of you, maybe God is saying, hey, you don't have to have it all figured out. I do. Currently in my season of life, God is... I, this whole year of 2022 was me trying to make a plan so that I could really focus on writing the book. And guess what happened? None of my plans worked out the way that I wanted in order to make me feel like I was ready to write the book. And whether that was, you know, having a certain amount of clients in a program or a timing or, you know, changing my schedule around, there were many different things that in the course of 2022, I hired somebody to help me with my funnels and and all these things, and nothing panned out the way that I wanted. And all I keep hearing God say to me is, write the book. Every time I go to ask him a question about strategy and what's ahead in 2023 and, you know, how to end, end 2022, all the things, write the book. And so I want to encourage you, if you're walking into or you're walking out of 2022 and into 2023, kind of where I am, like, oh, God, what are you doing? 
it's okay if you don't have this crazy mapped out strategy. God has gone before you. He is behind you. He is beside you. And he has not brought you this far to leave you. I want to encourage you to go back to the very last thing he's asked you to do. And my question to you is, have you done it? And if you haven't, like me, get on it. And if I can support you in any way to help you get unstuck, I just hired a writing coach because I knew that that was what I needed in this season to help me be accountable, to help you know get me there quicker, all the things, right? What a coach does. I cannot encourage you enough to consider hiring a coach for you to help you get unstuck, to help you get to where you want to go faster, to bridge the gap of where you are to where you want to be. And if that, if you're looking for that and you feel like you're really in need of some mindset and heart set and soul care work so that you can prosper in all things and be in good health as your soul prospers, you're looking for a coach who does what I do. I would love to talk with you about wrapping up 2022 strong and heading into 2023 so that's the deal is I, I have clients, I have things going on. I'm, I'm just simply taking time off of social. I am still taking clients for Q1 of 2023. I am focused on things with my team and I'm really focused on writing the book because that's what the Lord has made abundantly clear to me to do. But life is still going on. Just because you're not on social doesn't mean your business has to stop and that you can't do anything. Now, of course, there was a season for me, God called me to lay it all down and surrender it. And it's going to, again, look very different for you. But God is not like punishing you through social media and trying to make you miserable. Perhaps you need a little break. And for me, that's going to look like the rest of today and the rest of December so that I can come back January 2023 ready to rock and roll. So I hope this blesses you. I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that you know God has a plan for you and he can do more with your nothing or your little bit than you can do with your lot of it. And that he's not asking you to be, to figure out the strategy. God is the strategy. God is the source. And when you go to him, like Jeremiah 33, three tells us, he will tell you all the things that you don't know. So maybe for you, that's going to look like a Jomo challenge 2022. And I will see you physically online, um, in 2023, but podcasts are coming. I've got a lot of great guest episodes coming out over the next few weeks as I really focus on writing the book. And I pray that you are so blessed that you have a wonderful December and that you end the year strong, strong, not just in your numbers and your, in your, in your sales, but strong in the Lord because 2023 has some amazing things in store and I am here for it. I am here for you and I would love to support you in any way I can. So If you want to get in touch with me over the rest of this year, um, in any way, shape, or form, you can always email me at heather at heatherschreiberburns.com. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you have a great remaining 2022, and I'll see you in 2023. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for rest. I thank you for the joy of missing out on everything the world has to offer us. Jesus, we thank you for being our portion. We thank you for being everything that we need, and we thank you that you bring us joy and peace, and literally everything of this season is about you. And so God, I pray over my time that I'm taking away. I pray over every woman who is taking some time away. Lord, I pray that you bless her. I pray I pray that you bless her time. I pray that you bless her and her family. I pray that you give her strategies and blueprints, things that she has been praying for, Lord, as she spends time at your feet, that you give her all of the resources and all of the things that she needs to walk into 2023 with confidence and clarity and ready to rock and roll because the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. Lord, we are here for you. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 